Hey yo, I got something to say. Welcome back to the channel. If you find this information useful, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Guys, we're approaching 200 subscribers. Let's get it. Let's keep it going. Let's go. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment sections if you have any questions or what's going on. So, in this video, I want to cover my year working for CVS Caremark Specialty Pharmacy. I worked primarily in the call center, pretty much like this, with a headset, on a computer station, in a cubicle, in Fairfield, New Jersey, for CVS Caremark Specialty Pharmacy Call Center, Fairfield, New Jersey. So right off the bat, two things that I'm going to tell you that are super, super, super strict at CVS Caremark Specialty Pharmacy is that you cannot be absent. They don't tell you this when they're hiring you, but you cannot be absent. If there's going to be a snowstorm or bad weather, they'll just rent out hotels around you so that you can sleep in there and go to work the next day because there is no calling out. The second rule that they're super, super strict is that there can't be any phones, mobile devices, anything on what they call the ground floor. So like in the call center floor, you can't have no phones, no tablets, no nothing. That, that kind of just makes it a little bit, you know, uh, not fun if we can say that, you know. Um, it, for the most part, it's like a, it's like it, it is a real chill job, but there's a lot of external factors that make it super stressful. So like you could be on the phone, dealing with a customer thank you for calling CVS camera switch pharmacy how may I help you today you take their order and they might need a refill when you're doing the refill the manager the supervisor is just spamming you through I am like instant messenger in the little corner get on the phone get on the phone get on the phone get on the phone why aren't you on the phone why aren't you on the phone why aren't you on the phone and, and you're trying to do a refill so it's like they have a federal regulation where like they have to always be available or when the customers call they can't be waiting for more than like a minute or something before they get a representative they have some kind of weird rule like that where you gotta always be on the phone always be on the phone now I'm pretty fast I'm pretty fast on the computer and doing things but that does get pretty annoying and that does tick a lot of people off like really really bad because you could be trying to get a prescription for a patient that no longer has the prescription. You could be doing a change of address. You could be doing a refill, getting a refill order. You know what I'm saying? Getting a refill prescription from the doctor because you got to send a fax. And the system that they use is very old school. It's not like point and click like with a mouse and computer. It's control alt F2 and they have like seven programs open throughout the top. So it's just, it's, it's bonkers to be honest with you. And then on top of that, you have your supervisor get on the phone get on the phone get on the phone get on the phone you're just like yo I'm trying to do a refill and it adds additional stress unnecessary stress to be honest with you um they would fire people on a daily basis people were getting fired I'm surprised that like HR and CVS camera specialty pharmacy didn't really keep track of this information and be like yo why are people it was like a revolving door People would come in, people would leave. People would come in, people would leave. And we had like a little bit of a running joke where people would go on lunch and you'd never see them again. People would go on lunch like, yo, I'm going on lunch. Like, yo, be sure you come back because people would go on lunch and just disappear and you'd never see them again. And when I was there every single day without failure for 365 days, somebody was fired. The supervisors didn't really care, most of them anyway didn't really care they would yell at you they would demean you they would belittle you like when you would call them let's say let's say you were brand new right I had I had this one lady um, I think her name was like Christine or Christina or something I forget I forget her name honestly I, I do apologize but like I would call her and she's like didn't they teach you this in training why are you asking me this and you're just like whoa I, I was told we're all here to help each other and if you have any questions to call a supervisor and she would like uh, always always given a very bad attitude mean disgusting lady oh like every interaction I had with her from day one to the end she was always mean and nobody said anything my manager for the RA department she would just fire people like like nothing if you rubbed her the wrong way if you even had like a small argument with her, fire you, you're just fired instantly on the spot. The next day your desk would be cleared. 
so for you for you if you're thinking about getting this job you know it is a good paying job they do pay good they have unlimited overtime so i'm not going to totally bad mouth the job but if if you're thinking about getting the job keep your head down try not to get into any even even a little thing with with the managers because like e even even my because there's, there's like a manager and there's a supervisor for each department so I walk in, I'm putting up these papers, which have like the codes, because remember it's command driven. I'm putting up the papers and she's like, take that paper down. And I'm like, yeah, but it's easy for me to have it here. She's like, you can't block the window. That's that's a policy regulation. And it was, you know, because the cubicles were like all interconnected and whatnot. And my cubicle was right across from hers. And I just put it where it was slightly covering the window like it, it, the, it was a big window and I put the piece of paper you know covering a little small part and she was like take that down and I was like oh but couldn't I leave it and I was like oh but can I just leave it there because it's easier for me and she was like when I tell you something you just do it don't 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 talk back to me and I was like jeez you know and then she got together with the supervisor and they had to have a meeting all because of a piece of paper all because of a piece of paper her name uh, Andrea yeah I believe her name was Andrea total total mean person and then Marianne Falbert you know would just fire people like nothing so it was it was a very interesting job very very interesting I felt bad for a lot of people you know honestly because like people were let go in a couple weeks in a couple months and it was just like there was there was no verbal you know warnings write-ups there was no nothing you would just get fired and that's it so it was it was very for, for from my point of view it's like a good job because you go in there you're in your cubicle you're on the phone and you're just doing orders and whatnot taking care of customers doing refills working with the pharmacists with your supervisor but like all that external stuff you know what i'm saying like you put up a piece of paper and they're like, take it down and just do what I say. Don't talk back. And you're just like, whoa, like I'm not, I'm not talking back. I'm just asking you if I can just keep it. There. I'm not blocking the entire window. And, you know, having the manager, Marianne, it wasn't like, not even our manager would tell us to get back on the phone. It was another manager yelling at us. But, you know, if, if you look at the numbers, don't lie. You know, this is, I'm, I'm just a YouTuber. If you're watching this, if you're a CVS care market, you're like, oh, this guy's just bad mouthing us. This guy's just bad mouthing the company. Look at the numbers. Numbers don't lie. That's all I can say. But if you're, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to totally bad mouth it, because if you're like, man, I'm a pharmacy technician and I'm gonna get this job that's paying a good hourly, that's one thing I would say. Go in, do your nine to five, do your uh, uh, two breaks, do your lunch, and call it a day because they offer unlimited overtime you don't want to burn yourself out you know go work there for like if, if you want to do overtime an hour or two and just keep it pushing but in the long run you want to make sure that you're good make sure your finances are good your debts are good make sure that like you know you can pay your rent or whatnot because at the rate that they fire people which is sad because it's like it's a new jersey company and i love new jersey you know what i'm saying i try to represent for new jersey but when I go to work for a company like this and they just fire people like for no re like not even for no reason, like just for like whatever, like they just hire, fire, hire, fire, hire, fire, hire, fire. It's almost like a joke to them. You know what I mean? Um, the guy, Sam, the guy who's like a regional manager, Sam Gerges, if you said like the wrong thing, he would just fire you, which was like, yo, like take it easy, brother. Take it easy. You know, I didn't think that was I didn't think that was very nice. Um, my manager, Marianne Falber, my supervisor, Marianne Falber also fired people. Um, if, if I could go back in time, this was like five years ago. If I could go back in time and tell myself, you know, any piece of advice would be like, yo, just keep your head down. If they say, take the piece of paper down, like don't even rebuttal. Don't even ask if you can keep it up. Like, even though you have all these papers of all these codes, I might need to maybe shrink it or put it in a smaller format so I can put it somewhere. But it's, it's like, it's just do what I say and that's it. And it was, it, they, they made it. It's, it's a good job, but they made it bad, to be honest with you. 
So just to recap, uh, you can't be absent at all. No being absent. They'll hire, they'll get hotel rooms around the area, whatever, but they don't pay for food. You got to pay for your food. You can't have your mobile devices on the floor. No iPhone, iPad, Samsung, nothing can be on the floor. Um, and they're just always going to be on you. Get on the phone, 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 get on the phone. And they just, they, they make it, they make the, they make a good job bad, to be honest with you. Um, and just, you know, keep your head down, do what they say, clock in and clock out, do your nine to five, and that's it. And, and, and also the people in the front, like there were these two white ladies in the front, they were racist, to be honest with you. They were racist. And I didn't appreciate that. They, they called me a couple things, a couple times that, you know. You, you 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 know you know you know back then you know five six years ago i i i was more passive and i didn't really fight for mine and you know the way they the way those two ladies belittled people especially blacks and latinos in cbs camera specialty pharmacy you know what i'm saying but like back then when you're broke and you're honestly like screwed up like you don't really fight for yours. You feel like a little bit oppressed. And I was. I was in debt. My car was about to get repoed. I really needed the job. You know, I was I was in very, very bad financial standing. So I had to put up with a lot. But I think those two ladies in the front, you know, being racist towards blacks and Latinos was, was like not good at all. And I mean racist, you know, like, like, don't touch me. Uh, get away from here. Go over there. You know, just like very like you, you can tell the way they talk to people was they, they, they had their own little agenda behind it. So I really didn't appreciate that. Now, nowadays, I got lawyers and stuff like I'm ready. Uh, I'll fight anybody anytime. So I'm ready to go. I'm surprised. Like right now, if, if that was happening to me right now, what happened to me back then? I'd, I'd sue the crap out of them, to be honest with you. I know the right lawyers. I know the right people. I would place a huge lawsuit to those people because the discrimination I faced, you know, from those two ladies, the discrimination I faced from my managers, you know, just firing people um, day to day. And if you look at the numbers, a large percent of them are blacks and white or blacks and Hispanics. And I'm not trying to make this like a racial issue, but there's also some of it that plays into it. So... You know, nowadays I I, I just I, I don't I don't argue anymore. I just sue people, and you know I, I always win because when it's something's unfair, I don't I don't just sue to sue. I don't go to courts and small claims court or the the federal court, not the federal court, the big court because it's like small claims for under two thousand and over two thousand is another court. I don't just go there for fun. But if something's uh, an injustice, then I'll just sue you. I'll just sue you. That's the way it is always win because when you have like the actual facts and you have actual proof of what's happening you're always going to win but that, that's like a whole little side rant thing there but uh yeah you know hopefully this information helps you out on your journey that's all i would say keep your head down go in nine to five don't do a lot of overtime maybe do like an hour or two of overtime get your orders in go home and that's it man don't don't try to do above and beyond because they'll just chew you out. They'll they'll chew you and spit you out and that's it. So hopefully this information helps. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like, hit the comments. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.